presentation. Hi, everybody. My name is Elizabeth Newell, and I'm your vice president. You guys haven't seen me because I haven't been to an in-person meeting since the before times. Today, we're going to talk about getting started with your new bees. This is particularly aimed at those who have ordered packages and nukes and haven't installed them before. Who here has ordered a package or a nuke? and has not installed one before. Okay, there's gonna be a quiz at the end for prizes. Feel free to take pictures of the slides or screenshots for those of you on the Zoom. Hey, my Zoom buddies, you're my peeps. That's usually me. And uh, just, I'd ask that you not distribute it to anyone else. The report will also be published a few days after this talk, okay? So we're going to go briefly over my philosophy with this talk, which is kind of my general philosophy with beekeeping. Preparations that you need to do before you get your bees. Nukes versus packages. Very important distinction. What, what is going to happen on the pickup days and what days those are set for? Installing a package, installing a nuke, and then some kind of, you know, bee maintenance for your first month or so. So this talk is going to assume that you are using a fairly standard Langstroth um, arrangement. Is anybody planning on installing a package or a nuke into something that isn't a Langstroth, like a Ware or a Top Bar Hive, anything like that? Okay. Um, this will still mostly apply to you. What are you installing into, sir? Top Bar. Okay. But, you know, just change it up a little bit in your head. My philosophy is that it's much, much easier to prevent beginneritis problems than to solve them as a beginner, okay? There are many, many valid ways to install a package or a nuke. I'm going to be presenting just one way to do that, okay? I hear from a lot of beginners that they ask a question. They think a simple question, an innocent question. They ask five beekeepers, they get six different answers. And then those six beekeepers go to war with each other. Suddenly it's awkward, right? So I'm gonna be presenting just one idea, keeping it simple, keeping it less confusing, keeping it hopefully less controversial. This way of installing packages and nukes has worked for me since I started beekeeping. And it is the way that I install packages and nukes myself. I find that this way is pretty hard to kind of completely mess up. I'm not going to say it's idiot proof because we all know that's tempting fate. Idiots can get very, very creative. I also like this way because I have been package distributing person on a day like today that was package distribution day. And when it is cold like this, you really want to make sure that you get that package installed correctly and your queen doesn't get chilled to death. So this way works even on days like today, as miserable as it is to install a package in the rain. If you are an experienced beekeeper, who's a pretty experienced beekeeper who has installed packages or nukes before? You probably have your own preferred way and that is absolutely fantastic. We're not gonna talk about that way today, but everybody look at the people who have their hands up. And you know, if you have a burning urge to tell people a different way, you just volunteered to help a beginner install. We're gonna just one voice today. Okay, these are the preparations, also known as what you should not be doing on package day. Okay, you should have this all in place. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you purchase and read, cover to cover, a basic beekeeping book. I really like The Beekeeper's Handbook by Diana Samamoto Alphonse Avidable. And also, if you aren't so into reading, 
beekeeping for dummies is very succinct, though I think that one you'll kind of outgrow. Beekeeper's Handbook, I still refer to from time to time. You want to be picking a sunny, level, accessible location for your hive with plenty of room around it. And all those words were important, okay? I go to way too many beekeepers who are in their first few months, maybe their second year of beekeeping, and their hives are tucked back in the darkest, dampest, most inaccessible corner, way up or down some goat track hill. No, you need to be able to get to your hive. You need to be able to carry 40 pound supers back from your hive to your house. You also don't want to have your bees in the shade too much. Yeah, it's nice for you when you're working in the summer, but your bees are gonna be chilly, which means they're gonna be crankier less healthy and less productive. You also need to be sure that you have some space around your hive. Beekeeping is all about unstacking boxes and stacking them back up. You need a place to land those, otherwise you're gonna hurt yourself. Set up and fill your bee water before you go and get your bees because you're gonna forget. And if you forget when those bees are installed, they're gonna go over and imprint on your neighbor's hot tub or your neighbor's dog waterer, and they are not gonna be happy with you. So hopefully you have already fully assembled, painted, varnished, bedazzled, whatever you wanted to do to your hive. And if you're using plastic foundation, which most people do in beginners, you better put some extra wax on that. And yes, I know it said, that it has already pre-waxed, but I could sneeze more wax onto that foundation than it typically comes with, okay? Google how to add more wax to foundation if you don't know how, and don't burn down your house, okay? Use a double boiler. Now, if the weather continues to be bad, that may push back the nuke pickup date. Please be patient. We cannot control this just because we cannot control what happens with our suppliers and they cannot control the weather. Those of you who are highly religious, this is all your fault if it's delayed, okay? So watch your email. If something changes, you're gonna hear about it usually about a week or two before the estimated pickup date. Nukes versus packages. This is a big issue. Which did you order? Do not be that person. We always have a few every year who shows up on the wrong pickup day. Okay. A package is a screened box, a can of syrup, two to three pounds of bees, and a queen in an inner queen cage like this. That pickup date has been confirmed. Yay! It's not getting pushed back this year, even though the weather's been bad. It is going to be April 13th at 11 to 2. This is in red because this is package stuff. A nuke or nucleus colony has a plastic outer box, five drawn deep frames containing brood, pollen, and honey bees and the queen running around loose in the box. It's basically mini hive, okay? Different. Its pickup is estimated, note only estimated, May 15th, okay? Same time frame for each different days. Everybody got that? Both pickups will be at the Peninsula Feed Store on El Camino. And so it's very convenient, nice people there. They're not beekeepers, they're just hosting us, okay? Okay, so everybody, what is package pickup day? Put your hand up if you know. April 13th, you've won a prize. It's a beetle trap. Nuke day, what day is nuke day? Awesome, estimated, thank you, bonus points. You've won a prize. Okay. 
we're getting to that. Stay in the loop. The guild, and thus my only way of communicating to you all, is the information in your profile, your guild profile, okay? Not the one for the Google group. If something changes, if Bob gets ill and can't go get the bees, if the feed store catches fire, if the nuke pickup date gets moved back, that's how we're going to get into contact with you. That's also how we're going to get in contact with you if you don't show up for your package or nuke. We'll try. We won't try very hard, honestly. So please, please, please put a reminder in your phone to for nine o'clock tonight, you're going to go on the Guild website, you're going to log into your profile, and you're going to check that your Guild email address is not the one from your old work 12 years ago. Very important. You're going to check that your phone number on there is not you know, your landline from previous century. And it's actually a phone that you will pick up when it rings. And please pick up on pickup day, OK? You, you may be called by me. You'll probably be called by a volunteer who hears better than I do. Go ahead and put my contact information in your phone. And there's my email address, just in case of emergencies. It's best to text me. My ears don't work so well. Pickup days. Happy volunteers waiting for you to show up. Do not be early. Do not be late. Do not come on the wrong day. It's very sad when someone comes on nuke day expecting their package to be there and it's long gone. 11 to two only, okay? If you do not pick up your package or your nuke at 201, it reverts back to the ownership of the guild and I will sell it to somebody else who's waiting. This happens to a few people every year. Do not let this be you, okay? Please don't call the feed store employees. They don't know anything about this. They just know that we're going to come and do something with bees, okay? But um, do note that they have some bee stuff. So, you know, if you want to buy some things from them and, you know, if you want to get involved with chickens, it's way easier than bees. The people are nicer than me, too. Bring your receipt email. Um, we're going to be back where the hay is, kind of behind the store. Don't bother the animal shelter over there. Yes, there's a little parking lot. And then you just walk straight back. You'll see us by the hay. People who show up early. You may wish to bring an old thin sheet. And all of those words were important. Do not show up with a thick flannel sheet. Do not show up with a hand towel. Those things will not work for the purposes for which I'm telling you to bring a sheet. And your gloves, because you're going to be grabbing these things. And while I'm going to be standing here with my BVAC vacuuming stragglers off of the packages, you don't want to put your hand right on a bee and start out a really bad relationship with your beekeeping. So you're going to show up. You're going to show your receipt. You say, this is my name. One of the volunteers is going to check you off that list and give you your bees. On package days, about every 15 minutes or so, I will offer doing a brief pantomime of how to put your uh, marshmallow in your queen cage, just to help give you a little bit of a close-up idea. We'll show you here as well, but we'll show you there up close, remind you. Volunteers, you know, we're happy to give you a few pointers, but we're not there to teach you beekeeping that day, okay? We've got 108 packages and a few dozen queens to distribute. We are busy, busy, busy women. You may loosely wrap your package in that old sheet to minimize any little leaks. Okay? 
You can also wrap your nuke up. They often leak quite a bit. Really good idea to bring that sheet, the beekeeper's friend. When you're driving home, crack your windows, just like that much. Any bees that come out, they're usually not interested in starting a fight. They're just gonna go up on the window, they see the light, they run up and off they go. Bye bye bee. Please go straight home. Do not stop at Starbucks. Do not collect $200. Do not roast your bees in your car. Every year we have a few people who cannot make the pickup. Don't panic. If you find out you cannot make the pickup, you need to try to find somebody to, to make the pickup for you, okay? I should not be the first person you're contacting about that problem. You can post to the Guild's Google group. You can call your bee buddies. Who's in the bee buddy program? Nobody. Ah, but you know what? You know what? We have a club. So you can meet other people. Turn to your left. Turn to your right. Say, hello, neighbor. Maybe that person will help you. Form a mutual assistance pact. Say, hey, if I break my leg, will you go and get my bees for me? And I'll go and get them if you break your leg. If you still have no way of picking up your package, nobody can do it for you, you've really tried, you've made a good faith effort, then email me as soon as you know. And if you have some sort of catastrophe happen, you know, at the last minute, your car breaks down, your kid's in the ER, something like that, text me, okay? But it is generally your responsibility to pick up and install your bees and look after them. We are offering this year a very limited courtesy bee emergency installation option. For packages, you have a couple of options, you can a sub option. One is that Tyler, stand up please Tyler, will go to your home apiary where you have your hive and everything all ready, set to receive bees, and he will install your package. You will pay him 50 bucks for doing you this wonderful favor. The other option is that I install bees in my home apiary and you come and get them next week. You can't come and get them like the next day because they need some time to settle in. They might leave if we move them around too much. If I have to install them on my equipment, because this all happened at the very last minute, I'm charging you 75 on that, it's 50 if you drop off your equipment in, the, in advance, okay? This is because we're offering this as private club members. This is not me as your VP. For nukes, again, you have the offer of Tyler installing into your home apiary, or I will take your nuke back to my home apiary. I will remove a frame of brood from it and give it to my bees and give them an undrawn frame to draw. This will keep them from swarming until you can come and pick them up. We are only offering a very kind of limited number of slots on this, and I would like to reserve as many as possible for those people who break their legs at the last moment. So please make a good effort not to need this. On to packages. Oh, first, what happens if you don't pick up your package or nuke? Who knows? Say it again. It reverts back to the guild and we sell it. Yes, thank you. You contact him by contacting me first because I always need to know if somebody else is picking up your bees. Great point. If someone else is picking up your bees, your bee buddy or whatever, you need to contact me and let me know. Otherwise I'm like, I'm not letting you steal this person's bees. You have to tell me their name, their phone number, and their email so that I can contact them if something terrible happens. Great question. Parts of a package. Um, this is a typical package like this one. Um, there are some variations 
usually we're getting the wooden packages like this. There is such a thing as a plastic mesh package instead. I have no idea whether they might suddenly shift to using that type. Don't freak out. They're basically the same thing. Your package includes the package box itself, a can of syrup that is feeding the bees while they're in there, and a queen cage with a queen in it and a cork in the hole. The queen cage has a screen on it. That's very important. And it'll have a cork. Usually it, the cork is really, really well jammed in there. Okay. Installing a package can be very intimidating. It's your first bee experience, but you can do it. I did it. Lots of other people here did it. Please, please, please install as soon as possible. If you need to wait a few hours because your spouse, your friend's going to come over and help you install your bees later that afternoon, that's fine. Stick your package in full shade. Do not park it out in the sun. The earlier you install your package, the more bees you have alive. Bees start dying the moment they're put in the package. There's always going to be a few dead ones in the bottom. We want to maximize live bees because dead bees make no honey at all. Also, if you install earlier, you have more time to fix any issues that might happen. What sort of issues, Elizabeth? Well, like having a dead queen. Okay. Your goals by the end of installation should be that you have your queen hanging in the hive with this screen accessible to the bees. If this is pushed up against the frame and the bees can't get to her and feed her, she will die. You want to make sure that you have this cork taken out and the marshmallows that we're going to have shoved in there. You want the bees going to be great weather on package day, but if it was a day like this, you definitely want to make sure she's got plenty of bees around her so she doesn't get chilled. You want to have either, one moment, all your frames in the hive, or you want to have eight or nine frames and your frame feeder that takes up that one or two frame spot in there. You want to have the shoulders of the frames touching, and you want them roughly centered in the hive, okay? There's many, many ways to install, but if you use another method, make sure you've achieved all these things at the end of your installation or your installation will fail. Package install installation, this is my favorite method. Put on your bee suit. You're gonna pry, sometimes there's a piece of wood that's over the syrup can or a bit of tape or whatever. You pry that off. Sometimes there's also some uh, wooden slats here left over from when the packages were all joined together during shipment. You can take those off too if you want, get them out of your way. You pry open the lid if needed. You pry this syrup up with your hive tool and you remove it. There'll be a whole bunch of bees clinging to the bottom of it. You can just shake them into your open hive. You're gonna look at your queen and make sure she's alive. I also recommend that you very quickly take a picture of her because that way you know what she looks like later when you're wondering whether or not you have a queen. You're gonna remove the cork and you're gonna add the marshmallow. And I'm gonna show a video of that being done. You're gonna securely hang the queen in the center top of the hive with the screen accessible. I like to have it either up or down, not side to side, because then it can, get, uh, it can get blocked by a frame. You're gonna set her up your frame and feed her as much as possible. Usually the queen cage kind of pushes it apart slightly, not too much with these smaller California cages. By the way, there is a possibility that you will have a different cage type. I've never seen them include these, 
Bob says they're, they're going to do the California type, but just be aware other types of queen cages exist just in case they ran out of that kind and they gave us a different kind. You're going to pour the bees into the hive on top of that queen cage. And then you choose violence. Shake and pound those bees, kind of double tap them in. They'll all kind of fall in like beans. Fill up your feeder, use a funnel, and close the hive. If you need to, smoke the bees off your top bars. There'll be always some bees in here. I swear this thing is like made to not make it easy to knock the bees out of here. It's like one of those funny little um, puzzles that we had as kids where there's like the little ball and you got to get it in the right spot. Um, put the open package with the top actually touching the bottom board near the entrance, okay? Not a little gap. They won't pop across the gap. It has to be touching. So put it up on some bricks or something touching. And then you're done for the day. Go have a nice drink. You can discard the boxes. I still have mine from my original package install, and I still haven't found a use for it. Bee hoarding. Uh, not this year. So here's like a here's a hive that's set up, ready to receive a package. I have frames there. See how they're extra waxed, looking nice. Since I had drawn comb, I also threw in some drawn comb. Might as well give that queen somewhere to lay straight ahead. Here is a uh, cage that is secured. This is after the queen had been released, so there's bees all over it. But you can see how I've secured it here with some rubber bands. Get some big rubber bands or take a bunch of small rubber bands and make them into one rubber band. So here I have a little install video now. I did this one years ago, and this was me installing bees for somebody who couldn't make pickup day. So I was just installing into a small five frame nuke box, but it's, you know, it's the same thing if you're installing into a big hive. And I was installing um, using a queen candy, which looks kind of like a licorice all sort, but you know, same thing as with a marshmallow. Yeah, let me go back. Let's see if I can get this to play. Oh, and I was installing it on uh, mediums because they were an all mediums kind of person. You don't have to rest your package on your hive. I'm just doing that because I didn't want it to move the camera around. Taking off the tape. Pulling out that feeder. Brushing off those bees that are hanging. Putting that aside. You can see they're not all like rushing out, right? It's not super scary. And this was a nice warm day where they were fairly active. Wrestling to get that tab. If she falls in, don't panic, just reach in nice and slowly and pick her up. And here you go, you can see she's nice and lively. A really dark queen here. So it's good to know if your queen is dark or orange or stripy. Yeah, we're gonna get to that. You can rest the um, syrup can back on there, or you can grab like a little piece of wood or whatever, put it on there. 
they're not really going anywhere, but it makes everything go smoother. And I put out, there's my uh, queen candy. You want to have that out ready to go. This is awkward because I'm trying to be filmed. I've got performance anxiety as well as the regular anxiety that comes with this part of the operation. Okay, so I'm using a sharp knife here and digging it into the cork. You can also use a really small sharp screwdriver, maybe an ice pick, something like that. I'm prying at that cork. She's like, let me out, let me out. See, there's one of the bees feeding her. Got the cork out and put my thumb over the ant. Can we wait to the end? Thanks. Keep your thumb over the end. And push the queen candy in. This is where having you know, video game experience is helpful. You watch her going back and forth, and when she goes and turns around to go back the other. When you get the cork out, put your thumb over, and then just like take a few seconds, breathe, let your heart rate return to normal. They give you this little tab that's supposed to be for, you know, hanging the uh, the queen cage. And I, I hate it because I think it's like the, the hardest thing to do. And it's so error prone. So I just use the rubber bands and then I kind of wrap that little tab around the rubber band. See, there we got the screen facing down. The bees can get to her. They're already attending to her. I put her right in the middle of the hive. Pushing things together best I can. Now comes the exciting part. They pour out. See, now I've got most of the bees out of there. And you can see they're still not, you know, taking off or anything. You want to do it reasonably quickly, but, you know, you don't have to be in a panic. Yeah, don't lose your hive tool, Elizabeth. If you needed to, you could smoke them off the top bars. I'm opening up the little tiny door on this nuke box. You, of course, won't need to do that if you're installing into a hive. And then I'm going to take the package and put it up alongside so that it is touching the door, touching the, the entrance. If you have a dead on arrival queen, it's not common, but you know, we get a few. You need to send us a short video of your dead queen in her cage the day of pickup. This is why you want to install as early as possible after getting your bees, because you are going to have to give us a call. You're going to have to go and get her from Bob. You're going to have to bring her back and then you're gonna to have to do your install. If you were installing 10 minutes before sundown, it's not gonna happen, right? So please don't wait until the last minute. Do not contact the feed store and do not try to install with a dead queen. 
Bob, did you want to give your number or should I have them contact me and then I'll contact you? Okay, great. <laughs> okay let me just repeat that for the people who are online bob is saying be careful when you're taking the cork out that you're watching that she's just turned around and is running the other direction because you do not want her to fly away that is not a replaceable event and bob's number if you have a doa queen is on the faq about packages on the website Yes, question? Should you do the take the plug out in your kitchen instead of your backyard? Um, my kitchen has can lights, and the first thing that a bee does when it's in my kitchen is go up into the can lights. Uh, maybe if you have like a small bathroom or something, you can try that. But uh, um, also, you may be covered in bees. Depends on how your spouse feels about the whole thing. But Bob says 99% of the time, this all works. Like I said, just take your time with this part of it. Package install. This is the part that's about to get really, really controversial. I personally recommend that you check the next day, like 24 hours-ish afterwards, that the queen was released. Why am I saying that instead of four days or three days? Or I've heard all kinds of recommendations. One. I figure you guys are probably working four days from your package install. Most of you probably have jobs, right? Um, so you maybe don't have really a good option to do that. And if you wait until the next week, if you have a little space caused by that queen cage, they're going to make crazy comb in that space. And that's annoying to deal with. Remember what I said about it's easier to prevent problems than to solve them. If your queen cage somehow fell, because your rubber bands were old and not good or something, um, you might have a chance of saving her. Whereas if she lies there on the bottom of the hive all week, she's probably toast. And most times when I've gone in after installing 24 hours later, they've already, they've already eaten the, uh, the marshmallow out of the cage and she's already released. So there's no point in leaving it in any longer. So you just suit up, smoke the hive just very lightly. You don't want to disturb things too much when she's brand new in there and barely laying, if at all. Pull out that queen cage, make sure she isn't there. If she's there, stick her back in, try the next day. Push those frames together and center. Always, always, always push those frames together and center when you're done with your inspection or doing anything in your hive. Check and see if that feeder needs a top up. Close up that hive, have another hot or cold drink. Easy. Now we go on to the nuclear option, nu nucleus colonies or nukes, very easy. Parts of a nuke, you have your outer box and your lid. I have seen both types of nuke boxes coming. I don't know which type we're gonna get this year. Previous years, we had a lot of this. Last year, we had a lot of that. Who knows? There's the outer box and the lid. This style has these little plastic things called frame rests. They're designed to fall out when you're dumping your bees out. There will be five frames with comb, brood, honey, nectar, pollen, bees, and a loose queen running around in there somewhere. There's also a door either end on these that you just sort of push up and then it sort of the plastic deforms and opens a door. Little door on this type, you got to get in there with your hive tool or that, um, or a little uh, screwdriver or something and pop that out to open the door. Installing a nuke is really easy. You always want to install it as soon as possible to prevent swarming. These nukes are usually fantastic. They're absolutely stuffed with bees. They've got tons of capped brood. If you wait, they may 
cast the smallest swarm ever and you'll lose your queen. If you need to wait just a few hours or a couple days again because your friend's going to come over and you're going to do this together, you're going to put it on with the entrance facing the same way as the hive entrance and open that door so that bees can fly. They'll know that then, okay, this is the general area the hive is in. So when you install, they won't be too confused. Do not, do not, do not leave a closed nook in the sun ever, okay? They will roast. They produce a lot of heat themselves. And don't leave it closed in any location more than a few hours, okay? You don't want to leave them all cooped up. It's not good for them. So you're just going to open your hive. You're going to remove five frames from the middle. You're going to push those remaining frames to the outside so you have lots of clearance. Open your nuke box. You may have to pry a little bit, probably not that much, and lift out those frames one by one, put them in in the same order you took them out of your hive. You should also then pick up those colorful frame rests, put them to one side. Then you can tip your bees in and bang and dump them, just like you did out of the package, into the hive. Make sure that your frame and feeder are all touching and centered in your hive. Fill your feeder, close that hive, have a cold or warm drink. In this case, the nuke boxes are terribly useful. I highly recommend you either keep them, or if you really, really don't want them, you can give them to me. You can drop them off at my place. Make sure you hang on to the frame rest, though. They're pretty useless without it. Uh, and the doors can pop off if you're very rough. Make sure they're on there, too. Okay. So everyone's good. We've installed the package. We've installed the nuke. What do you do if your queen is dead? Who knows? Someone who didn't win yet. Put a hand up. Take a video, text us to us, call Bob. Yes, yes, yes. Try and get a prize. Your first month ish, your main thing is you're going to feed, 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 feed your bees. You should feed until they draw out all of your brood box frames or until they stop significantly taking the feed. Sometimes they're like, eh, I don't like this stuff. I'm going to get the nice fancy stuff from the flowers. Or until they start really packing away a significant amount. Whichever comes first, okay? I recommend that you feed either with a two to one sugar to water syrup. You can feed one to one but it means carrying more water around because they draw wax based on how much sugar they get, not on how much water they get. Two sugars, two parts sugar to one part water. Technically, it's by weight, but volume is, uh, is honestly is close enough. And we can talk at the end about how to make syrup if anybody doesn't know. The other option that's really, really simple, barely an inconvenience, is to just go and buy two and a half gallons of ProSuite. That's shelf stable, which is nice. When your first box is about 70% drawn, so seven out of 10 frames are drawn, it's time to add the next box. You may need to move your outermost frames inward a few at a time per week as your box finishes getting drawn because a lot of bees would rather die than draw frames nine and 10. Yeah, I've had a lot of people, they ask me to come and help them with their hive. They're like, I've been beginning three years. And I look in their hive and I'm like, oh, you've still got beginneritis, huh? They said, what do you mean? I said, your, your frames one and 10 aren't drawn. Pro tip. There's going to be a, a little asterisk there. We're going to get to it in a second. Stop feeding when you super. And you're going to super once that first brood box is 100% drawn. 
and your second brew box is getting towards that 70% drawn. Okay, if you know you're going to go away for a vacation for a month and it's 60% drawn, then do the next step, okay? Think ahead. You want to check every few days to a week after adding your super to make sure that they're using it, especially if you're using a queen excluder, okay? There's a bunch of tricks that you have to go through sometimes to get them to use an undrawn super for the first time. Some bees can be super stubborn about this. Anyone using a flow hive for the first time this year? Okay. You really, really need to pay attention to this. They often really refuse to use flow hive supers. Make sure that your flow hive super is unpacked right now and sitting out in the flow hive box in the sun so that's a lot of that nasty plastic smell gets off of it, makes them more likely to use it. Inspections. You can start inspecting your first week. Another controversial opinion I have is that I'm okay with beginners checking once a week, but please don't check more than once a week, okay? I think if you're a beginner and you get in there once a week, your first couple months, you're going to learn a lot. Yeah, might it set your bees back a tiny bit? Yeah, but you're going to learn so much just watching that colony grow. And you're going to be able to head off problems early. Like, what if you messed up and only put nine frames back in? Or you didn't push them together or whatever, and they start crazy comb. It's a lot easier to fix one week's worth of crazy comb than one month's. We'll get to that if you want at the end. We can talk about that and the syrup. Bear in mind, oh, and no more than once a week, but if you find they're really guzzling that syrup, you can go in and just very quietly puff a tiny bit of smoke, open it up, slide that inner cover across, and put the feed in. That's why we're having the um, feeder in the one or 10 position so we don't have to open the whole thing up, especially if the weather's cold. It is 100% normal and expected that packages or swarms, if you call it one, will dwindle for a bit more than three weeks. Why is that? Because adult bees are constantly have some of them just dying because they got old. And it takes 21 days to make a new worker from an egg. So even if your queen ran out after that marshmallow, and laid that egg the first day that she was in your hive, it's 21 days before that bee emerges as a worker. And it's quite a while um, before she graduates to flying out of her hive. So your hive will dwindle for around four weeks, and then it should expand rapidly. You don't have this problem with nukes because they have brood of all ages in them. Do not rearrange those frames doing that anti-beginner-itis thing I talked about until at least four weeks after installing a package because they can't, um, they don't have enough staff to keep the brood warm if you do that. They'll only put as much brood as they can handle for that first month. After that first month, you can start doing that a little bit. You should always have goals for your inspections. Um, and I think your goals these first few months should be that you're getting that firsthand knowledge about bees and colony structure. This is why I'm okay with you looking at them every week. You want to get those brood boxes drawn. That's so important. Get them drawn. Get them beautifully, fully, gorgeously drawn. Okay. That's when the most honey is coming in. And getting super strong is difficult because you can only do that on the natural nectar flow. And do not panic. It is totally normal for your comb to darken over time. Okay? Please, please, please never throw away drawn comb. Please, everybody, promise me you won't. It hurts my heart when people throw away drawn comb. Even if it gets moldy in the winter, don't throw it away. Call me. Take a picture. You know, if you think you're going to throw it away, Come and give it to me and I'll give you brand new frames in exchange. I'm happy to do that. That's like minting money. And we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> but it's normal for the comb to draw, darken over time. The little dirty bee feet all over it, no longer white and pristine. 
the cocoons in there, it darkens over time, stained by honey and pollen. Eventually, the comb will get almost black. Bees love almost black brood comb. Tips for your inspections. Please always smoke first, okay? Please smoke your bees. You don't want to make them extra upset. You don't want them stinging you. You want to have a good relationship with them. Always work from the outside in. You're going to take out an outermost frame first to make room. That's going to prevent you from rolling your queen between the frames when you draw them up. As you, time goes by, the wax and propolis inside your box is going to make it that your frames don't slide around easily anymore. They're going to stick. You're going to use your hive tool and you're going to pry them apart at the shoulders. Bet you didn't know frames had shoulders. These are the shoulders in green of your frames. If you try to pry in the middle of your frame, you may break your frame. Have a plan for your inspections. What are you looking for today? Good plans for your first month or two are things like checking how much of that comb is drawn. Is it time to rotate stuff in? Is it time to add another box? Is it time to super? Learning the different types um, and stages of brood, you know, an egg, a larva, capped brood. Learning the difference between capped brood and capped honey. Learning the difference between nectar and honey. Learning what pollen looks like in there. Freaks a lot of people out when they see that funny looking stuff in there. It's not peanut butter, folks, it's pollen. And observing the general growth pattern and structure of the hive, right? So like at first, you're not gonna see any larva, right? Because bees are eggs for three and a half days. Then you will start to see some larva, but you won't see any cap brood. Then you'll start to see cap brood. Eventually you may start to see drone brood. You may start to see drone comb in between your um, top and bottom frames. Observe these colony structures and this growth patterns as you go. It's very educational for you later. I don't recommend going spending a lot of time looking for your queen on a regular inspection. You rarely need to find her. Learn to see eggs instead. <clears throat> Use a cheap magnifier and an expensive flashlight to see eggs. You know how you know if you have a good flashlight? You look on the side of the flashlight and there'll be some words on it. You go and look up those words in the internet and you see whether that company makes anything other than flashlights. If it's like the name of your old work or that conference that you went to five years ago, it's not a good flashlight, people. Treat yourself. Great, great idea one of my students have. Use your phone's camera to zoom in and take a picture. Saves the eyes. If you had eggs, you had a queen three and a half, we'll say four days ago. That's usually good enough. Thank you. Now I just have to come up with some telekinesis. When putting that hive together again, make sure those frames are centered and pushed together every single time. Here's those things you're gonna look at and learn about in your hive. See these eggs? See them on the yellow foundation? See how hard they are to see? <laughs> this is why they sell black foundation. Here we see capped brood, we see open brood or larva, and we see the pollen in there, all nice and good and healthy. Here we see the general shape and structure of the colony. They've put their honey up here and it's capped. Then they have their brood here and usually a nice little band of pollen in between. You don't want to see this. This is what happens when you don't wax your foundation well enough or you leave one of your frames out of your hive. Anyone's interested in my services? I have a paid group Zoom class for beginners and another one for intermediate keepers. You can learn never to need to buy bees again, so you don't have to listen to my stupid lecture. There's lots of freebies, including sometimes freebies. And I like to get think I give thorough, friendly, and this one voice instruction so that you're not being bombarded with pe different people's ideas about bees. I also do paid private classes in your apiary. I sell queens and bees to my lesson clients. 
you can text me. All right, getting back to the topic of the syrup. Thing to know about syrup is that unlike ProSweet, it is not shelf stable. So you have to make up what you're going to use. I don't recommend that you use anything other than a frame feeder with ladders in there for a bunch of reasons that are too complicated to get in here into here. But one of the main reasons is um, the little Boardman feeders encourage robbing and they don't hold very much syrup. A frame feeder will hold like a gallon. You get your sugar, you get your water. You want to use regular table sugar. It doesn't matter where it's sourced. You don't want to use powdered sugar because they put some stuff in it to keep it from clumping this bad for the bees. You put your water in a pot on the stove and you bring it to a boil. You know that whole thing about don't put boiling water in your eye? Don't put the sugar directly in the boiling water. You bring it up to a boil to kill the bacteria in it and then you let it cool down till it's just warm enough you can kind of barely stick your finger in it if you're me and you don't mind heat too much. Then you stir in your sugar to get it to dissolve. Let it finish cooling down. You'd think they'd like a hot meal on day like today, but they don't. And then you go and put it in your hive. If you need to hold it for a few days, you put it in your refrigerator. Again, I recommend two to one. Supering tricks. There's a bunch of different ways to get a bees to use your super. And it's too much, I think, to get into because we're at 8 o'clock. But you can Google various methods. Um, one of the methods I like best is pulling the excluder. But you have to be OK with maybe getting a little bit of brood up in your honey super. Some people find that too objectionable. Um, just remember that if you use one of those tricks that, for instance, involves moving a deep into two mediums or medium into two deeps, do it very briefly and then put everything back in its natural order. Otherwise, again, you will have crazy comb everywhere. All right, more questions. I see we've accumulated plenty in the chat. I've scared everyone half to death. Do I have an issue with chloramine in the tap water? No, you do not have to dechlorinate your tap water. Good question. Um, just use it straight from the tap. It is fine. Nor, nor chloramine. Yeah, um, I dechloramine and dechlorinate my water for my fish tank. I do not do it for the bees. They do just fine and dandy. And the fluoride makes their teeth extra bright. You can move them one at a time, but it's kind of tedious. What I typically do um, is put the hive tool and then just very slowly wedge them over, slowly wedge them over, slowly wedge them over, slowly wedge them over. Um, so you can do it either way, but I think it's better to do it all at once, but very slowly. So that as those shoulders come together, you're not pinching bees. And most importantly, you're not pinching your queen. Oh, when you're putting, when you're, Oh, oh, thank you. Sorry. Okay, a uh, question about getting out of the beginner itis thing. Um, so what you do is you take, say, frame number one, and you pick it up, and you put it in like the five or the six position. Don't do too many, because you don't want to break up and chill your brood too much. Um, don't, um, and don't ever have one frame of brood all by itself. Keep the brood at least in pairs because they keep each other warm a little bit. Haha, <laughs> how many frames at one time to move? So that all depends on the weather and how many bees you have in your hive. Um, but generally, it's going to be one or two. 
And you know what? It's never going to hurt to do one. And then, like you say, do the next one the next week. But just keep on it because you want to get all those, you know, all those nicely drawn, right? Question in the back. What about moldy comb? I love moldy comb. Bees love moldy comb. It can have all kinds of fantastic mold on it, all the colors of the rainbow. It's very damp in our climate. If your hive dies or if it dwindles a lot, you're going to have moldy comb on the outside um, of the live struggling colony or all throughout in there. It's fine. I had a whole box of the nastiest looking moldy comb you could imagine last year. Threw a nice big swarm on it. It was clean in 24 hours. They go through and clean it all up. I wish, you know, I wish. If you're stalling two packages or two nukes on the same day, is there anything special you should do? Um, if you're doing two packages, you might want to consider if, you're, if your hives are really close, they're like on the same stand, pointing one of them in a different direction than the other, because there will be a few bees that are flying around um, and then you don't want them all going into one versus the other and then becoming kind of unbalanced in that way with too many bees in one, not enough bees in the other. However, if you still find that, that they're doing that, which sometimes they do because one of the queens is just sexier than the other, what you can do is after a few weeks, you can pull a frame of capped brood out of the strong hive and move it over to the weak hive. It's always a good thing to keep your hives reasonably balanced so that the big hive doesn't decide to pick on the weak hive. And then, you know, if you need to eventually um, get them pointing the same direction, you can just turn them 90 degrees per day and they will figure it out. Don't turn them more than 90 degrees per day or they get very confused. Do I recommend freezing moldy comb before putting it in the hive? I recommend freezing moldy comb before you store it away from the bees. Freezing it will not kill the mold, not change anything, and you don't need to anyhow, but you do need to freeze comb, I think, before you store it if you're storing it away from the bees. So say your hive dies in August, or excuse me, in September. We're getting way ahead of ourselves here. Say your, your hive dies in September and you need to keep your comb until next year, you want to freeze it and then keep it away from the wax moths. And I give lots of presentations on how to preserve your comb from wax moths. I am the preserve your comb evangelist. Okay, I will follow up with our Bee Buddy volunteer and see where everything is at with that. And I do encourage everybody you know, the Bee Buddy program is great, kind of helps these things, but the reason we have a club is so that you guys can all be friends and interact and help each other. That's all the questions from the chat. Any other questions here? One more question. Can you repeat that one for me, please? What does that cost and where can you get it? Um, you can buy it on Man Lake. I think it's less than 20 bucks, 15 bucks. I'll show you one, I brought one. This is like the first one ever made. Oliver gave it to me. And you just have these little ladders in there to help prevent bee drowning. This one holds a gallon. It replaces, I think, one frame in most hives. They also make a two gallon version. Great for those of you who are planning a bit of a long trip right after getting your bees. It replaces two frames in your hive and you just slot it in 
in one of the outside positions, just like it's a frame, and you make sure everything's squared up around it too. Another question in the back. Yeah, yeah, there's these little things inside that the bees can cling to so that they don't drown. Some of them will still drown because they're incredibly dumb, but it helps to reduce um, bee deaths. I really like these frame feeders. They're small, they're cheap, they're easy to store. They're not huge and bulky. They make it much less likely that you're gonna have a robbing frenzy. And they hold a ton of syrup because probably you guys, what's the most you're gonna be able to top up your syrup once or twice a week? If you're trying to do that one cup at a time, those bees are slurping up that syrup. You want them to be drawing for you every single day of the week, not taking a blind man's holiday for three days because they didn't get any syrup. And I think, I'm, I don't know if I mentioned this, um, if you're making your own syrup, your, your own syrup, store it in the fridge, it'll keep for a few days. If you try to store it on the shelf, it will ferment and you'll have something that's going vaguely alcoholic, which can also be nice, but you know, your bees don't want that. Um, the advantage of buying the Pro Suite is that it's shelf stable. A trick to clear the ladders of dead bees. Um, after using the, the thing, I, I would just take them out and hose them out. All righty, I have one more question. How to get bees to use a super. So number one way to get bees to use a super that's absolutely easy is to put some already drawn frames in your super. How do you get those? You beg. You beg an experienced beekeeper or you offer them money. Usually, you know, they'll, they'll give you stuff for money. Honestly, I think that's like the best way to get bees going into your super because it's so annoying trying all the different tricks to get them to go in there. I, one of the things that I tell my um, my students is that one of the perks of my class is that I will give them drawn comb to get their, their colony started. Um, it just makes it a lot easier. Another question. Yeah, that's the other one is moving the excluder for like a day in there. You may, if you remove the excluder for a day, they may start using it. Now you may end up with some brood in your super and you may feel not so good about that or okay with that depending on who you are. But there's lots of tricks you can Google online. But the main thing is, is remember whatever trick you're using, if it isn't just putting drawn comb in your super, you need to undo that trick pretty promptly once they start using the super or you'll have a mess, okay? That's why I like the just get some drawn comb, you know. Offer to help them on extraction day. Wax their car, something. My truck could really use some, some body work and some detailing. Yeah, Bob says that there is a frequently asked questions page for, that summarizes a lot of these same things. And of course, this presentation will be available online for everyone to check out. All righty. Everybody ready to have some bees? Yay! Okay. All right. Let's, uh, who wants some free bee stuff? Yeah, we're good. Thank you so much. <laughs>